I'm very, very uh, just honored and privileged to be back in God's house with you today. And uh, I really do appreciate your pastor. And uh, I was in uh, Texas uh, this past week, Nocona, Texas. Uh, it's about two hours outside of uh, Dallas. And uh, you would think uh, Nocona is hardly even on the map. And uh, I get there to Nocona and I'm preaching a revival and then uh, start speaking of where I'm headed next. And they were asking, and I told them I'm headed to Messenger uh, Church in, in, in Missouri with Pastor John Rhodes. And then they're like, oh, yeah, we know him. He comes and does a lot of camp meetings and all of this thing. Don't you know you have a great pastor when not only he has influence and have pastored this church and this community, but also the influence expands beyond these four walls into other parts of the United States of America and around the world. I appreciate such great, great leadership. And also, uh, you know, it takes a great team to be able to do ministry nowadays. And um, I appreciate uh, Troy and his family as well. And uh, he came and was driving through and preached at our church where I'm serving now as an, a, a pastor there. And um, he'd done a phenomenal job. If he would have done horrible, I would have acted like I didn't invite him. But uh, he really did just a great job. And our church people really loved him. And I pray that you just appreciate the treasures that you have within this house that uh, we get to receive from every Sunday, Wednesday, and that kind of thing. So one more time, would you give your leadership a wonderful round of applause? I appreciate uh, just him and Pastor Rhodes in my life. As a matter of fact, in 2003, I was getting ready to enter into my senior year. And I've told you this before, and if you have your Bibles, you can go to Ruth chapter number one. But I was getting ready in my senior year to... Uh, uh, enter into my senior year, and, and uh, I went to a camp meeting every year, and one of the most inspirational preachers uh, uh, that I love to look at to, that caused me and inspired me to want to know God more was Brother and Sister Rhodes. And they would come into uh, a church in Eufaula, Alabama, and do a revival every year. And I'll never forget uh, that, that, that summer, he laid hands on me, and he said, one year from today, a door is going to open, and you're going to know it's the will of the Lord one year from today. Exactly one year from that day, I graduated and entered into full-time ministry. And I was able to go back that next year and even testify of that very fact. I mean, it's cool to be around a man of God that can hear God with such clarity and also scary at the same time. Ruth chapter number one. Ruth chapter number one. Uh, I'm excited about Again, being here with you and diving into this word, uh, God's about to speak some things to our life. I was sitting at a desk uh, in, in Nocona, Texas, and I'm sitting there, and while I'm there, the Holy Spirit spoke some things to me that I'm about to give to you. And when I share this with you, I did not feel able to uh, release that there in Nocona. But when I share this with you, if you believe this, before I go any further into this word, after I communicate this simple phrase that the Holy Spirit gave me, yet with such profound depth, and if you grab it, it will affect your life immediately. I want you, after I give you what God spoke to me, and then we may expound on it just a little bit this morning, but if you believe it, I, I, and I'm not big on, on, on uh, trying to make people do what they don't want to do, but if you really believe what I'm about to say after I say it, I want you to stand to your feet all over the house and invite this word into your row and seal it with a praise, not, not, not just to con con confirm his word, but out of hunger for the reality of this truth to come to you. After I give you this, I want you to just stand to your feet and magnify God, and let's usher in the moving of the Spirit with a praise from the word that he's about to speak to us. I was sitting there in Nocona, Texas, and all of a sudden around, it was about 4 o'clock in the morning. I wished it'd be 10, but it was around 4 o'clock in the morning, and the Holy Spirit spoke to me. He said, I am giving a call of clarity to a place of destiny for a people of victory. I'm going to say that one more time. I'm giving a call of clarity, right, to a place of destiny for a people of victory. If that's you, I want you to stand on your feet right now and open up your mouth unashamedly and begin to magnify the Lord. 
Come on, come on, magnify him. You want that word to come on your row. A call of clarity to a place of destiny for a people of victory. There is a call that's going to connect you to a place that's going to connect you to a people that's going to usher in God's victory in your life. And I just believe, thank you Holy Ghost, that the victory that I'm talking about today, it will be experienced in the spirit, but also will be experienced in practical life in every day. God is about to give you a call in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, as we get ready to go on a journey together, in your word, I'm asking you, Father, that your voice will be heard. And that this voice will be a call of favor, a call of strength, a call of joy, a call of provision that we will answer in Jesus' name. And I thank you, Lord, that you will confirm your word with miracle signs and wonders and that it will work its way into our everyday life. And we give you the praise, the glory, and the honor for it. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. You may be seated. Ruth chapter number 1, uh, verse number 1 through 6, and then we'll move on. Now it came to pass in the days when the judges ruled that there was a famine in the land, and a certain man of Bethlehem, Judah, went to sojourn in the country of Moab, he and his wife and his two sons. And the name of the man was Elimelech, and the name of his wife, Naomi, and the name of his sons, Malone and Chilion, and he chilled on out, if I've preached before. They were Ephrathites of Bethlehem, Judah, house of bread, and they came into the country of Moab, and they continued there. But as life went on, Elimelech, Naomi's husband, died, and she was left with her two sons. And then things went from bad to worse, and they took wives of the women of Moab. The name of the one was Orpah, and the name of the other Ruth, and they dwelled there about ten years. And then Malone and Chilion died, uh, also both of them. And now the women were left with her two sons and her husband. But notice verse 6. Then she arose with her daughters-in-law so that she might return from the country of Moab. For she heard, somebody say heard. For she had heard in the country of Moab how that the Lord had visited his people in giving them bread. I have come by way of the Holy Spirit to give somebody a word today because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of the Lord. And one of the reasons why the Holy Spirit has sent me here to a specific people for a place of destiny, for a people of victory, is, is to give you a word that thunders louder than the voices of the enemy within our lives. How many of you know there's a lot of voices that are screaming today? There's a lot of voices that says the church has lost its power, that the blood doesn't work anymore, that the Holy Spirit is not moving anymore. There's a lot of voices that says bitterness will always be the bite that takes us down and pulls us to the grave or that there's no more joy and I've tried this church thing. There's always voices of haters and voices of circumstance and voices of religion. But can I announce to the body of believers that there is one voice that has the ability that when he speaks, it has creative power within his word. Words. Can I even take you back to Genesis chapter 1? It said in the beginning, right, God created the heavens and the earth, and God opened up his mouth, and he spoke a word. Somebody shout a word, a word. He spoke a word. Anytime God speaks, it has creative power. That's the reason why more, more than I want Facebook's word in my ears and more than I want television's words within my ears and more than I want culture and what culture is saying to be in my ears and more than what the news and Fox and all of these others are in our ears CNN. I want the word of the 
living God to be in my life because any time a word is dropped into my ears from the voice of God, it has the potential to step into a broken down situation. But with the power of the Holy Ghost hovering over the seed of that word, it has the ability to erupture out of this flesh and before you know it, I can have a treasure that is in an earthen vessel and the glory of God can be revealed. I'm here to speak to somebody today to let you know that there is a call that God is sending out and this call is a call for you to conquer what's been conquering you. Mm. Woo. A call to conquer what has been conquering you. You know, you can take a lion and take him out of the wild and you lock that lion up and all of a sudden his desire to roar after you feed him a couple of meals, his desire to roar, to roar dissipates. He gets comfortable in his cell and the reason why he loses his roar is because now he has no more appetite because he has no need to conquer. But when he's out in the wild, there's challenges that present him. And he was created, come on somebody, to be an animal that conquers, right? He, 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 he mounts up to every challenge. He roars with authority. But if you put him out of his element and place him in a cage and feed him, eventually who he was created to be begins to dissipate to the size of of the width and the length of the cage that he has been placed in. I pray, I pray, I pray that this week during revival that if religion has placed you in a cage to the degree that you've lost your hunger to sense and smell and go after the next word that God's trying to put in your life because can I tell you something? I refuse to serve a God that's all powerful and not have that power operating in my life on a daily basis but do you hear the call and are you hungry enough to leave where you are to go after that call it is a call to conquer somebody shout I'm a conqueror Woo. I am a conqueror and there's something about this that the Holy Spirit is trying right now to to activate your your <laughs> here's a word titillate your hunger desires. He is after to arouse your desires to where he's allowing the Holy Spirit to start trying to cook up something and start allowing the fragrance to make it into your prison cell so that you can begin to smell anybody hungry what God is cooking so that you'll begin to have an appetite once again to go back and conquer some things good God Almighty that's been conquering your life. This week I don't want you to try to conquer something that isn't there. The power of God is for you to conquer stuff that's within your own home but if not careful you'll start inviting tribulation in like it's a brother that's supposed to live in the room down the hallway when I'm here to tell somebody that the scripture told me that weeping may endure for a night but there's some joy that's supposed to come in the morning time and the reason why that scripture does not ignite hunger in people anymore is because they become satisfied because they've got more faith in Goliath than they do an anointing it's stone. They've got more faith in a lion than they do in their prayer life. They've got more faith in the Red Sea than they do a God that has the ability to anoint your hand so that you can stretch it forth and walk across on dry land. I'm telling you here today that God is calling you to a place. It is a call to conquer. As a matter of fact, whoo, I was on my way here, and <laughs> my plane got delayed. And so I'm like, man, that stinks, you know. That's the reason why it's always good to leave a day in advance, but my plane got delayed. And so I'm packing in a hurry, and I, I was just in a revival from Texas, you know. And uh, 
I'm not as blessed as Pastor Rose. He can drive everywhere, and he's probably got closets everywhere he goes. He always looks like just as sharp as a tack. The man can take anything and make it look high class. Anything, anything. He can make a hearing aid look like a Cadillac. You hear what I'm telling you? The man is blessed. He just got, you know, but I, I, in Texas, I was like, well, this is a casual church. You know, they wear jeans. And so I wore jeans and a blaze. I was trying to save on my packing. And then, then I go back to my room and I'm throwing suits, you know, all in my bag. And I'm getting all kind of suits. And then I'm trying to, you know, back up. And I'm casual. I got some casual stuff too. So, you know, it is what it is. But I'm packing stuff and I'm throwing it in the bag. And then I get on the plane or get to the airport and, and, and they delay my flight. And so I, I get there a little later. And then finally, there was only 15 people left for my flight because everybody else had done a board admission. I was like, like, I got to get to Missouri, you know what I'm saying? I am not calling that man and telling him I missed my flight, right? And so I, I'm sitting there, finally make it on the plane. Well, then my plane, after we land, we sit out there in, in, on the airport for like, you know, 30 minutes, and my other plane is boarding. So now I'm like, oh, my goodness, oh, my goodness, I got to get to my plane. Go, go, go. Would you please let me out of here? And then they don't even let us out of the gate. It's the first time, you know. I, I'm coming down the steps out in the parking lot. I was like, what kind of airport is this? You don't even have a gate, you know. I started to play like I with somebody important and come out, you know, like, how y'all doing, you know? I'm Brad Hambit, conqueror of the world through Jesus Christ. Snapchat this, put this on Instagram, you know? And so I'm coming down the steps and I'm trucking it. And do you know as I'm trucking it to my next airport, I come around the corner. I am hungry. I had one meal. And I know it don't look like it, but ever since God gave me peace, I can eat everything, you know, that moves and don't move. You put it on my plate and hallelujah, this is the day that God has made and I will rejoice. But my my, my, my potatoes that I had and my hamburger with cheese and I, I, I cut up potatoes and onions, right? And I, I put those potatoes on top of my meat patty and I allowed the potatoes, you know, and the butter and the juice of the onions to run down, come on somebody, to that meat patty that was filled with cheese and cooked to a right temperature at a right time so when I pulled it out, oh God, I could taste and even see that the Lord was good. But now all of that was gone, and I'm hungry, you know, and y'all see how small I am. If I don't eat, I waste away. I mean, I got issues, as a matter of fact. And so now my stomach is gnawing at my backbone, and I'm like, I know I've got to get you something to eat. And I turn the corner, and this fragrance overwhelming, fragrance, this popcorn made it through my long snout, and it rests all the way down to my tummy, and it tickled my hunger, and it said, man. And I bet you that that one kernel of popcorn would taste like a medium whale ribeye in my mouth right now if I could just have just one little kernel, good God Almighty, of popcorn. But time would not allow me, but the fragrance filled the room. And that's what I'm here to tell somebody today. If you have got a hunger, the Holy Spirit is fixing up something, and there is a call and if you can smell are y'all hearing what I'm telling you if you can smell what he's pouring out from heaven there will be a hunger whoo, that will cause you to say wait a minute I've been satisfied here too long. And see, that's what happened to Ruth, and that's what happened to Naomi, and that's what happened. She said, You know what? I've been living around this area a little bit too long, and there there is a call. To conquer, she said, I got to go back because I hear a word. I hear a word. Somebody needs to get this. God wants to speak to you so clearly this week that you know he spoke to you. I'm talking about that you know, that you know, that you know that the Holy Spirit is trying to move in your house and break some things around. What is it that you need to conquer? What is it? Where is your marriage right now? Where's the relationship with your children right now? What's going on on your job right now? How's your mental health right now? How is your emotional stability right now? What's going on in everyday life? What is it that you know you need victory in, but you're afraid to approach it because you feel like you are defeated? Can I tell you the battle does not belong to you, but it belongs to our God, and it is not by might nor by power, but it is by his spirit. And he said in John 6, 63, he said the word, the word that I speak unto you, it is life and it, it will quicken your mortal body. Is anybody hungry to hear the Lord today? There's a call. There's a call. 
There's a call of clarity. There's a call of clarity. There's a call of clarity. And in the middle of all my, this is a side note, <laughs> or just a squirrel that I'm chasing. But in the middle of all my fast packing, right, I had me a bow tie. I wanted to wear me a bow tie this morning. I wanted to look as cool as Pastor Troy. I had this bow tie. It was a red bow tie. It was a brand new bow tie, and I wanted to put that bow tie on. It even had a little, you know, bow tie, uh, you know, uh, ushering assistant over here that would rest, you know, right in the pocket, and it, it matched the bow tie. And I really wanted to wear that bow tie. And we packed these clothes, you know, real quick, fast, and in a hurry. And and and, and I got out my jacket, and uh, I pulled it out of my uh, suitcase, and so I'm pressing it, right? I'm ironing the thing. I'm like, man, this thing's so jacked up. So I'm just sitting here, and I'm ironing it. And as I'm ironing, I got everything thing ironed and then I looked on the left side and do you know there was a stain from the top shoulder all the way down to the bottom and then I remembered one particular Sunday morning I'm getting ready to pray uh, with our staff before we go out into the sanctuary and uh, I, I'm sitting there and all of a sudden uh, uh, my youngest baby girl all of a sudden just and it went from top of my shoulder all the way down to the bottom of my jacket and that Sunday morning I thought you know what I want to look nice but I want to be very casual and I had like this real tight shirt on so it was not you know, I did not need to take this jacket off because number one I don't have a whole lot of muscles <laughs> And it would look scary, but I had to take it off of that particular service. But as I'm ironing this, I'm looking down at that stain, and I'm like, how in the world did this jacket make it to my closet for me to pack? Anybody have been there, done that? Maybe not. I was like, how in the world did this? Some of y'all looking at me, I can't believe he put that jacket back in his closet after that baby just puked all on it. Maybe your life is not as busy as mine, but somehow it made it into my closet. And I picked that thing up, and I'm like... This is not what God has for me. <laughs> and so I altered it. Some of us need to just take a deep breath. Do you like what you smell? That's so funny. I went to a church one time and a girl literally sung, what is that smell? And then she said, Jesus. <laughs> oh, praise God. We need to write another one. <laughs> so many times we can get in funky situations and it's like everybody knows, I'm almost done, everybody knows something isn't right, but nobody wants to deal and address the issues. Can I tell you, this is a call of clarity and victory where God is ready to deal with some things at your house. It's a call of victory. Then there arose with her daughters-in-law that she might return from the country of Moab for she had heard in the country of Moab how that the Lord had visited his people in giving them bread. For those of you that are writing down stuff, please write this down. What God has for you this week is going to be very practical. They were hungry. They needed bread. God called them home. God is ready to visit you at the place of your need. How sad is it to come to this house and have his glory, but go home and have our pain? I want to say it again. How sad is it to come to this house and experience his glory, build on other people's faith and praise, but go home and have our pain? The God that we serve here should be the God that we see when we go back home. And God is here to challenge not the Lamb of God, but the King of God within you. Are you ready and hungry for God to change what seems to be unchangeable within your life? It is a call. Are you hungry for God to meet you in a supernatural way, but where it changes your everyday walk, Woo. your everyday talk? Your everyday conversation within your mind. I cannot explain to you how beautiful it is to walk with God in a way where you're not asking him to conquer everybody else. But when God conquers the enemy within, there is such a peace that walks with you every day of your life. Woo. Now I'm in a hurry. <laughs> I know you will. But God is here to give us practical then verse number seven it says wherefore she went out of the place where she was and her two daughters-in-law with her and they went on their way to return unto Judah Naomi said unto her 
two daughter-in-laws, go and return each to your mother's house. The Lord deal kindly with you as he have dealt with the dead and with me. Uh, as a matter of fact, and I think I've told you even this before, and it doesn't take the Holy Spirit or a rocket scientist to understand if things are, 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 are dead around you, you need to transfer. Because you get around somebody that's full of the Holy Spirit, that's walking with God's word, that's hungry for what he's saying next, just for one crumb to fall off the table. Trust me, there will be a power within their life. Are y'all understanding? And Naomi said unto her, go back and may the Lord deal with you. And then notice what she said. The Lord grant you that you may find rest, each of you in the house of your husband. Then she kissed them and they lifted up their voice and wept. Go get rest? Is that really what you call rest? <laughs> Is that really what you call rest for me to return among the dead and find life? I want to ask us a question. Is that really what we call rest, that 20 minutes in that recliner in between our hecticness, in between our busy schedules, in between life's problems? Is that 20 minutes really what we call rest? God desires to give us a Sabbath once a week. I believe that. But I also believe that there is a divine rest that is, with, that is to be within our hearts on a daily basis. And the Holy Spirit sent me here to provoke somebody. Please don't rest around dead things. Please don't settle huh, for having a form of godliness but deny its power in your own house. One of my prayers that I try to pray consistently is, God, let the gifts of the Spirit operate in my home, then at your church. Let the life be within my house. Let those that know me the most respect me the most. Let Father, I want your power to be revealed in my home. Don't let me rest around dead things when the fact of the matter is everywhere Jesus went, life broke out. As a matter of fact, when somebody was buried in the grave, he began to tell them, I am the resurrection. And it doesn't matter what anybody else believes and it don't matter what anybody else is feeling. But if this word is hitting your heart and you can hear the Lord saying, I'll resurrect life in your dead places. It doesn't matter if there's a seed of faith, God will begin to resurrect his glory. Wow. Mm. So don't rest. If you have your Bibles real quickly, I want to look at a scripture in Micah 2.10. I don't want you to settle for less. Or even settle for what is good, because good is the enemy to best. Look in Micah 2, verse number 10. The scripture says, Micah 2, verse number 10. Micah 2, verse number 10. Notice what it says. It says, arise. Man, you're good. Thank you. Arise and depart, for this is not your rest. Do you hear the voice of the Holy Spirit? Arise ye and Depart. There's a call. There's a call of clarity. It's a specific call. It's a call of blessing and favor and to conquer. He said, arise and depart, for this is not your rest. There's somebody that the Holy Spirit is trying to speak to. Where you are is not where you belong. And the spirit of oppression and demonic activity and the work of the enemy would love for you to believe that this is your dwelling place. Not so. Not so. The last time I checked, Jesus said, my peace I leave with you. Not that the world gives, but the peace that I give. It's a complete peace. He said, arise ye and depart, for this is not your rest. And notice what he said, because this place is polluted. This place is polluted. Are you living in a place, your dwelling place, where streams of pollution are all around. Because if that's the case, it's not long and parasites is going to enter your bloodstream and carry you to the grave and how great that death is going to be. Arise ye, depart, for this is not your rest because it is polluted. It shall destroy you even with a sore destruction. 
If you don't want to know Christ in his power, it's almost better for us not even to know his name than to know him and enter into a form but not ever have the ability for him to be a way maker to get me up out of some situations and some pain and some filth and some sin and some addictions and some past failures to be able to get me up. His power is still able. It shall destroy you even with a sore destruction. Listen, matter of fact, I was in Texas, <laughs> and a guy came up to me after service, was talking to me about some things, some things I really didn't want to hear, and some things I probably shouldn't have heard, but what do you do when you're evangelist? <laughs> okay, pray the Lord. Oh, ooh, oh. okay, pray the Lord. Well, yeah, let, let's, let's pray about that, but anyway, he was telling me that not too long ago, he went down to a Texas lake, and as he was in a Texas lake, he had to stay in the water for two hours. I don't know about you, but I like to go to a lake for recreation, rest. Put me out there in a the speedboat, throw me out, throw me off an inner tube, hit, hit the water so hard you forget all your problems. It's rest. I have a blast out on the lake, but he told me, he said they had to get their pontoon boat up out of this lake, and somehow or another it flipped over, and he was in that water for over two hours, and the water was up to his neck. Not too long after that, after being in, in water for that long, a parasite entered into his body. Yeah. Parasite entered into his body. Sickness started occurring. And before you know it, he found himself at the hospital having to be treated from this parasite that even just medication could not get out. They had to surgically remove this sickness out of his body because he had found rest in a place that was polluted. I don't know about you, but I don't want to settle for pollution. I want God's holistic peace. Spirit, soul, and body to be at operation to the degree in me that when we come together in this house, that there's a stream of living water that flows from my life that sets the captive free. Come on, somebody. That's around me. There was a pollution. So make a note to self, don't swim in Texas water. I heard that voice loud and clear. There is a call of clarity. <laughs> To a place of destiny for a people of victory. I will not get in Texas water. They even told me that, that one parasite entered through this kid's nose and ate his brain. Yeah, and I'm like, isn't that sad? If you rest in places of pollution, sin is good for a season. But then it leads to corruption. Verse number 12, I'm almost done for this morning. <laughs> Because I'm hungry. Turn again, my daughters, go your way. For I'm too old to have a husband. If I should say, notice these questions, I have hope. If I should have a husband also tonight and should also bear sons, would you tarry for them till they were grown? Would you stay for them for having husbands? Nay, my daughters, for it grieveth me much for your sakes that the hand of the Lord is come out against me. Here's what I want to tell somebody. God is not afraid of your questions. God's not afraid. I love asking God questions because questions always take me somewhere. God is not afraid of, well, why am I in this situation? And what if this doesn't work out? And what if I don't do this? And what if I can't do this? And what if, what if all of this situation, what if, what if, what if? What if I told you that big thing happens on the two-letter word of if? God is not concerned about your questions. Take your questions to God. Take God back through the pages of your life, the history of your life. Go over those questions and, and, and be, begin to give them to God and watch God not be concerned because how many of you know God's the creator of the heaven and the earth and he's spinning the world on its axis and while he's doing all that, he's still got time to have undivided attention with you because he's got a call for you to conquer 
a place of destiny for people of victory. There's a call. There's a call. Notice what Ruth said. Notice what Ruth said. And Ruth said, entreat me not in verse 16 to leave thee or to return from following after thee. For whether you go, I will go where you lodge. I will lodge. Your people shall be my people and your God shall be my God. And Ruth said, where you die, I will die. I will be buried where you're buried. The Lord do so to me more if aught but death part thee and me. And when she saw that he was steadfastly minded to go with her, then she left her speaking. God is interested in some people. If you want to answer this call and go to a place of destiny and live in a place of victory, can I tell you, we've got to learn to answer this call and walk steadfastly with him. Steadfast. Somebody say steadfast. Walk steadfastly with him. And I may deal with this some later on in the week, but please understand you run with devils, but you walk with God. You run with devils, but you walk with God. This call to conquer this place of destiny and for a people of victory is not about you coming in here one Sunday and giving God everything and being like, oh my gosh, I'm going home and I'm going to read through the Bible in two weeks and I'm just on fire for God. No, 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 no. You, you, you run with devils, but you walk with God. Like the old song says, and he walks with me. And he walks talks with me and he tells me that I am his own there is something about a commitment where you prepare yourself and even posture yourself for longevity not just a visit I want to walk with him I want to perfect my private prayer life I want to perfect my daily devotion in his word I don't want to visit I want to walk isn't it amazing that the children of Israel were pursued after an enemy, but they walked across dry land. How is it that God can get you to a place of destiny walking quicker than your enemy can catch up with you running? Are y'all hearing what I'm telling you? There's some people, you just got this fast pace and you're, you're completely burned out. I tried that God thing. I tried this. I tried that. And now you know you got to go to church because it's the answer. And you come in and you sit down. You raise your hand and you fit in. But there's no power in your everyday life because you tried to run with God when you outran him and stood have walked with him. Are you hearing what I'm telling you? There's nothing like sweet communion going to the garden alone with your God on a regular basis. He said, I am a rewarder of those that diligently seek me. And in order to walk with him, it requires humility because you have to put everything else in life on hold. Woo! Will you stop? just to gain God's attention and walk with him. Put life on hold, schedules on hold, cell phones on silent. Isn't it funny how electronics are supposed to be given to us to slow life down? To give us more time. I can order my groceries from my recliner, pull up in a grocery store, and let them load them for me. I don't even have to go out. Yet somehow the busyness of life keeps me running until I no longer even know how to walk with God in the cool of the day. But even when Adam and Eve fell short of the glory of God and death entered into the world, notice God didn't come running to the catastrophe. No, he walked. Why? Because he had everything under control. And somebody needs to hear today that God is not concerned about your mess. He's going to walk to you. But when he gets to you, he's going to lift you up so that you can walk with him. Because there's a call of clarity. A place of destiny for a people of victory. Walk with me. <laughs> Walk with me. Work for me. And watch what he will do. Stand to your feet all over the house. I know, I know you're probably used to another 25, 30 minutes. <laughs> but I prophetically speak to somebody. There's going to be some food after this. Hallelujah. Do you hear the call this morning? 
Do you hear the call this morning? And I'm getting ready to invite you to this altar. I'm going to invite you to this altar, and I'm going to believe by faith that you're going to hear a call from God that's going to shake you where you are. And it's going to begin to remind you that God does not want you settled. You were created to conquer. You were created to get that degree. You were created to write that book. You were created to start that business that you were created to conquer. There is his will for your life that he preordained before the foundation of the world. And God does not want you settling on this side of Jordan when, Caleb, there's a mountain for you to possess. There's a call. There's a call. There's a place. And it's for people of victory. And as you get ready to come to this altar right now, would you raise your hands all over this room? Now, divine work of the Holy Spirit's getting ready to come in here. Do you hear what I'm telling you? A divine work of the Holy Spirit's getting ready to come in. And when you make it to this altar in just a moment, the Holy Spirit's going to start walking down the corridors of your soul, the avenues, the hallways. As a matter of fact, there's some men. You're hearing the call. God's about to call you forward. There's some things. You hear this call, and you're ready to answer and walk. You're ready to answer and walk. You're going to hear that call. He's going to show you that he wants you to conquer. He may even show you the giant that he's getting ready for you to defeat. He's going to show you a place of rest, and he's going to show you a lifestyle of victory. A lifestyle of victory. A lifestyle. If you're ready to answer that call, go to that place in the spirit and live in that victory. Right now, would you get out of that seat and get to these altars and raise those hands toward heaven and call upon his name? Come on, all over this house.